So hi and welcome to this second part of, of the answer to this question in Gazebo Answers. Uh, in the first video I tried to give an example of how to use um, the Hydrodynamics plugin with a very simple example which is a sphere and I gave the, the answer more or less here. So basically what we had is this so I'm using ROS Development Studio and I've launched the simulation if you if you didn't see the the prior the the first video please pause see that video and then come back again to this one but basically what I what I learned what I show you is how to create this the sphere spawn it and make it float so have a zero buoyancy or neutral buoyancy. So as you can see, the simulation is running, but it's floating. So no force upwards or downwards uh, is applied. So we have the buoyancy, so it's pulling up, but the weight is pulling down. So no force at the end. So the thing is, okay, this is very simple, I have a simple sphere, but how do I do it with very complex um, geometric shapes? For example, I'm going to launch a more complex example. Mm, here we go. So here we have it, it's a bit bigger. So as you can see, this is a model of um, a robotic fish called Nado. And we want it to float in the same way or have a neutral buoyancy so that you can move the fish around and it doesn't go upwards or downwards. So how do we do it? So there are two approaches to this. The first one is what I'm going to show you now. The second one, I'll do it in the next video. So the first one is calculating the volume of this three-dimensional uh, mesh. And based on that, calculate the mass that you'll need to have neutral buoyancy. Thus, that's what, you, what I'm going to show you now. In the next video, I'll show you how to, instead of using this mesh, we'll use a simple geometric shape so that um, it's easier to make this calculation. Yeah? Okay, so the thing is, if we try to use the mesh, if we go to the IDE and we go to, let's have a look, Wait a second, here we have it. So this is the URDF of this model here. So as you can see, for example, in the first, let me, oh, sorry, this one's not this one. I have it here, this is the simple one. There we go. We select this one, okay. So as you can see, the base link here, we're using meshes for the collisions and for the visuals. And it's a, a dive file, three-dimensional mesh, complex shape. And the thing is, how do we make it float? So the only thing that we can change here is the mass, okay? This is the only thing that we can change because we, the volume, we have it already set by the, by the mesh. So the only thing that we can change is the mass and also the, the density of the fluid. If we 
if we change the density, the floatability will change, the buoyancy will change, and if we change the mass also. So what we are going to do is try to make the, the mass put it in a way that it floats, it has neutral buoyancy. So basically for that, to calculate the mass that we need, we have to multiply the density of the fluid, in this case is water, so 1,000, more or less, 1,000 kilograms per meter cube, and then we multiply it by the volume of the shape. So the shape is this. Yeah. So how do we calculate the volume of a three-dimensional shape which is not regular? We don't have formulas to do that. So luckily for us, now that three-dimensional printing is, is used everywhere, a lot of programs have plugins to calculate the three-dimensional shape or the volume that we'll need for a for a mesh. So you can do it in many ways, but one way is using Blender. So if we go here, let me select. If we start a new project, okay, and we remove all the stuff that we have here, let me just connect this so that we you can see my keyboard so if we start a new blender project we select first the units so metric and then we import a die file for example let me let me get the main body this one for example yeah there we have it. So if we press N, we can see the bounding boxes and its dimensions and so on. So the thing is, how do we calculate the, th the volume of this shape? So if, we, if you press Control, Alt and U, you'll get the Blender user preferences. And if you click on add-ons, and you type uh, 3D, that's it. You have to select this add-on, Mesh 3D Print Toolbox. I have it already selected. When you select it, if we, you see that here, you get another tab here. So let's go and see what we have. So we click, and here, it gives us a lot of information, but basically what we need here is the volume. So what you have to do is just select the shape, in this case all, because it's the only shape that we have here, and then we press volume. And it will automatically generate and calculate in centimeters cube the volume of this shape. Fantastic. So we have to do this for each and one of the shapes. Then what I've done is I've created this um, office uh, file. And here I have all the calculations of, I've written down all the volumes of each of the shapes that we have. So the three parts of the body. So if you go here, you see that it's divided in three parts. Then we have, uh, a caudal fin, then one up, down, and in the sides. So basically is all this. So this one is the one we, we just did. So I've just converted it to meters cube. And then what I've done is multiply. If we go here, you see that I've multiplied the volume in meters cube by the density of the fluid. So just the formula that uh, I'll leave in, in, in the description and in the answer a bit more how these formulas get, but basically is to get neutral buoyancy. So here we have 
the mass that has to have this shape to have neutral buoyancy in this fluid. Okay, perfect. What happens with this? Well, the problem with this is that it doesn't work. And I'll tell you why. If you go when you launch um, any, any model with buoyancy, with a plugin of hydrodynamics and buoyancy basically, if you use meshes, you'll get this warning. Volume not fully, let me, here we have it. So, compute volume not fully implemented for this shape type. Returning bounding box approximation. So what does this mean? So the thing is that in Gazebo, it doesn't support, this plugin doesn't support the um, custom meshes. So this is a problem because if we put those values, they won't work. Why? Because this one is supposing that it has this volume. So let's say uh, 825, okay? The thing is that it's not calculating buoyancy based on this volume, but on a bounding box. What's the bounding box? Well, the bounding box is this. There we go. So as you can see, it's a much bigger volume than what the real volume is. So what does that mean? That it will float. It will have more buoyancy because it will have more volume. So we have to calculate not based on this, but based on the bounding box. Then the next question is, how do I get the bounding box? Well, uh, luckily we have the bounding box data just here in Blender. So if you press N, you'll see that you have all the data about the mesh that you have selected here. In this case, we have the dimensions, and these dimensions are the dimensions in centimeters of this bounding box. Fantastic. So now I'll do exactly the same thing, but with this volume. So if we go here, I have my shape and I've written down, I've written down the dimensions of this cube, then I've calculated the volume that it's x by y by z, easy. And as you can see here, you see here that the volume of the bounding box is much bigger. It's much, much bigger. So if we calculate this in meters cube and then we calculate it the same way, so volume by the density, multiplied by the density, you'll see that it's asking us to give it more weight. Okay, giving it more weight will float less. And that's how we get the neutral buoyancy. Okay, so we do exactly the same thing for all the, the shapes. For all the shapes we have. And we'll get something like this, so masses. And then you just have to go here and substitute this mass that I did. I, I just set this just for, for fun. It's not, uh, it's not a real weight or anything. So I have here already an example with all set up. So as you can see in this narrow body one version two, I set it this mass, which is the mass calculated with the bounding boxes. Okay, and we do it for each one of them. Okay, then in principle, this should work and it works much better than if you set the, the um, the mass calculated with the volume, the exact volume. The only thing is that for some reason Gazebo doesn't quite get it and also you have some some stuff that is not that precise or maybe you have the center of mass is not basically is that the center of mass 
a center of gravity with multiple shapes, it's maybe moved. So maybe it's a bit down here. And this is really important in, in, in ships and submarines, especially in submarines, because you have to not only have the forces zero, but also that it's all well distributed along, along the, this axis. Also, you need some friction with the fluid so that it compensates. But the thing is, okay, once you have this, we hit play. And as you can see, it floats quite well. And it's just a matter of calibrating the weight in a way that compensates and doesn't because as you can see it's not stable but now it's floating because as you can see it's not going up or going down it's just staying more or less where it should okay and that's how you do it for meshes for complex meshes like this one so in the next video i'll show you how to do it with uh, collisions so in, instead of using meshes, we'll substitute this, this meshes that we have here by collisions, and we'll have to compensate some stuff here so that it's easier and you have it with geometric shape, shapes. Okay, so I hope this was useful. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And see you soon. Bye.